I'm Trina Renze. I'm a professor in biomedical engineering. Uh, my research is in tissue engineering and applied biomaterials. Uh, we look at developing scaffolds that act as structures to facilitate cells to form tissues in the body. So we're mostly interested in orthopedic uh, regeneration of tissue, so these would be bone and cartilage. Um, we also do spinal cord research. Hi, my name is Gloria. I am a PhD student in the forensic class. And the work that I've been doing for the past few years is involving the developing materials that help uh, repair cartilage by using different aspects of the natural cartilage environment and using that to help promote the development of cartilage out of the present kinds of cells. Hi, my name is Hetty, and I am a PhD student. I am uh, working on using tissues in the to understand the effects of bone, microbiome, and progressive cell growth. My name is Kathleen Yuski. I've been working in Dr. Renze's lab as an undergraduate student researcher for the past year. This includes creating formulations for these scaffolds and also characterizing them, both from a biomaterial sense and uh, characterizing protein release from these scaffolds. The inspiration behind what we do is, um, you know, somewhat related to my own training. So, um, as an undergraduate, I had an opportunity to have an internship in rehabilitation engineering when I was a mechanical engineer as an undergrad. And that allowed me to get a sense for what types of devices are needed when, say, a patient is no longer able to move. Um, these may be patients who are paralyzed from the waist down or from the neck down. And after that experience, I realized that I could apply engineering to medical problems. So I took my training as mechanical engineering, got my graduate degree bioengineering, biomedical engineering, and have uh, pursued this type of uh, regeneration type of technology ever since. Yes, going back to the idea of tissue engineering, the idea is that we're trying to uh, make a structure that is similar to what the cell is going to see. So the process of electrospinning allows us to make these fiber structures that are similar to uh, the exoskeleton that is found in the body. Uh, so the process of electrospinning is the high voltage. Uh, to uh, pull fine fibers from the polymer solution onto the ground to plate. So these fine fibers can collect and make this brand new oriented non woven um, device to that. Now I can't read, but it could also be modified to the So it really allows you to be modified how you want that final structure to look like, uh, depending on the application that you want. So with electrospinning, it's um, easy enough that you can make these nanofibers that the cell can interact and for instance like if we use bioactive nanofibers which we have to mimic the bone environment um, we can use a small amount of those um, of these materials and it's actually um, fairly cheap and then um, tailor it to what the cell feels in the nano level. It can take me a whole day to spin to um, be half a day, and then you have to go about your work home. Basically, seating, and after seating, every day you have a team, well, not every day, but every other three days you team media, and after that, um, you go about either assaying or imaging. A lot of goes into being part of a, of a lab, um, and it really depends on what stage you're in. If you come in and you're new, um, you really uh, just try to get used to the lab, you know, where things are, who to talk to when something goes wrong. An hour typical day can, like Gloria was saying, it can literally vary. A lot goes into just getting into today, a lot of planning. So it's not just a typical, it's not about today per se, it's about basically two weeks. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little hectic to manage uh, classes and, and being in lab and doing extracurricular activities. Um, but in a sense, I feel like the more you do, the more you manage your time. So if we're not actually studying experiments, we're planning for future experiments or taking data from the experiments that we've just run and analyzing that data. What does that mean? What is, uh, how will that guide my next set of experiments? And so from the moment you come into the lab, you really start to learn that kind of mindset and so that once you're much older and are in the lab full time, you can do that. At the same time, you know, having lab responsibilities, taking care of the lab, making 
or that like, they're running smooth. It's just really the experience that you get, you know, learning lab techniques is, is really cool. And I think the most important thing is you get a hands-on experience as to what you're learning. Uh, you really get to take what you get in the classroom, what you read in the textbooks, and apply it in real life and see the outcome. To see how what you're working on, what you're studying, how it can actually be implemented in a real world sense. So the overall goal of my lab's research is to ultimately repair these tissues that would um, would ordinarily not be treated by uh, certain drugs that may be on the market. Um, and so we need alternative therapies that can effectively repair these very large defects that may be in, say, bone or cartilage. Um, these may be due to traumatic injuries, um, say you've had a car accident, motorcycle accident, um, or the military, for example, in the battlefield, they may have walked on a uh, explosive, so they've lost a significant amount of tissue that needs to be It may also be due to disease um, issues, you have osteoporosis, you have arthritis, um, and that degenerates the tissue. So you need something that will actually repair, regenerate the tissue. And um, so our strategy is on these biomaterials, and we combine them uh, potentially with cells or some other type of active molecule that will actually accelerate tissue repair in the body.